الحمد لله الشهداء يا رب In life and death, Israel's occupation decides the fate of Palestinians. It's been nearly two years since Maisa and her husband last saw their son. Saeed El Kony was a 23-year-old living in Nablus who loved motorbikes. He became a member of the Lions Den, a group made up of youth rebelling against the occupation. He died in an armed confrontation with Israeli soldiers. Two weeks later, they received a letter saying the body had been confiscated by Israel. All they had to bury was his hand, a bag, and his partially burnt ID. It's only when he died that we discovered he was part of the resistance. None of us knew. I went to the hospital and his friend told me my son was dead. I wanted to see his body, but they said it was taken away. A symbolic funeral was held. But the pain is real. The family were told that if this man now buried here had at the time given himself up, the remains of their son would have been returned. Now this policy of withholding bodies and using them as bargaining ships has existed since the creation of the State of Israel. Actually, it was inherited from the British mandate, but it's only since 2015 that it intensified. It's a policy that Jews fighting against the British presence in Palestine decried at the time. Hundreds of bodies had been confiscated since the occupation of the West Bank started in 1967. Before, they kept only the bodies of Hamas supporters or someone who carried out an attack. Then the Israeli cabinet decided to keep all the bodies, regardless of political affiliation. And sometimes the reason of death can be obscure. All Nisreen and Nidal Musa know is that their 15-year-old son, Muhammad, took his father's car in an evening in December 2021. A couple of hours later, this video already on social media shows the car after the teenager rammed it into a checkpoint. And Muhammad is standing there, a soldier injured on the ground. We live under occupation. You cannot figure out what triggers your child. He always follows what's happening on his mobile phone. I don't know what affected him exactly. They killed him. Anyone they suspect of anything. Immediately. Maybe they interrogated him first. I don't know. How many hours was he held? Was he tortured? I don't know. So many things. Nisreen had a grave made to give closure to her youngest son who was asking after his brother. But for her, closure will only come when the body of her son is laid to rest. And that's at the will of Israel's military occupation. Abdel Hamid, Al Jazeera, Nablus.